Releasing a game soundtrack on Steam can be a bit complicated. This is especially true if you want to release both MP3 versions for the smaller file size and lossless, for example, WAV or FLAC versions for the higher quality. Here I'm going to do a walkthrough and explain how it works. Creating a listing for a soundtrack has a lot in common with creating a listing for a game demo. It has some new data entry and takes other bits of info from the parent game listing. The place to begin is in the All Associated Packages, DLC, Demos, and Tools section of the game you're releasing a soundtrack for. Under Soundtracks, you add one by clicking on the Add Soundtrack button. I've already done that, and I'm not going to create a second one here. Now you can navigate to this soundtrack by clicking on it, and it'll also show up in the All Apps section of your Steam dashboard. This particular soundtrack already has a Steam page live, but has not been uploaded yet. Let's look at the store presence checklist. It's a subset of what you have to do for a Steam page for a game, with the info and description, mature content description, cover art, release date, screenshots, capsule images, community icon, and the only different thing here is the album metadata. I like to set a launch discount of 10% for 7 days. I haven't done any significant amount of testing or searching data on what the best discount amount and length is, but I've heard that it's better to have a launch discount than not. I'm sure you'll have no trouble with the non-metadata parts of the store listing. Let's take a look at some of these. Like a game, the basic info should include developer and publisher. You can enter your website URL here if you want. It's good to enter some keywords just to be sure you turn up where people would expect. Sound files are operating system agnostic, so I don't see why you wouldn't have all three checked. They give separate data entry fields to enter disk space for the base package and the high quality. You can sell a soundtrack as just MP3s, but it's kind of expected that in addition to the lossy encoded base download, you provide high quality lossless audio. WAV is the most common, uncompressed format, but I think some people also release FLAC files. Having a high quality version isn't mandatory, but you really should do it. On to the description page. Entering this is no different than the game listing page. Just describe the music. It's pretty straightforward. The age ratings page is also pretty simple, especially if it's all instrumentals. You might have an extra click or two if you have songs with explicit lyrics. Hopefully you're not someone terrible who generated their music with AI and can check no there. The cover art is simple enough, 1000 pixels square, which is a little small by today's standards. I wouldn't be surprised if they doubled that soon like they did with Game Capsule Art not too long ago. Now, the metadata section can be a bit confusing. If you have an artist without a label, you typically enter the artist's name as the label. Depending on how you have things structured or how you want to present them, the artist and or label might be the name or studio under which you're publishing the base game, or you might have made an agreement with the composer or artist. You can also check with the composer to see what they prefer if you don't have a preference. You can see here that I've already submitted some metadata with track numbers, names, and length. Now, download the CSV track metadata template and fill it in. It's a CSV with a few columns, and some of them are optional. Let's take a look. My spreadsheet program of choice is LibreOffice since it's free and open source, but you can just as easily edit in Excel. Let me just adjust the column widths and zoom in a bit so you can see better. Here you can see that there's a disc number column first, so multi-disc soundtracks are supported, though with everything being digital, separating into discs is more of an aesthetics thing. Of course, fill in the track number, original name, and duration for every track. You can localize track names into other languages, but that's pretty uncommon with music. The ISRC field is optional, and that's meant for tracking sales data. You'll never get your gold record if you don't fill that in. If you've uploaded your soundtrack via DistroKid or CD Baby, which I recommend doing before uploading to Steam, you'll have ISRC numbers you can enter. Check out my other video on uploading to DistroKid, linked in the description if you want to know more about that. Here it is in DistroKid, you can copy and paste this into the spreadsheet. Here's what my finished CSV file looks like for navigating the labyrinth. Once you've filled out that CSV, Upload it to Steam, and it'll show the new metadata. Now screenshots is a bit of a weird one. I never know what to put here, so I just throw in a few game screenshots. It seems like it would make more sense to have square images to show album liner notes, which I get are mostly a thing of the past, but still. This only requires one screenshot, unlike the five required for a game. 
If you have some thoughts on best practices with game soundtrack screenshots, please share them in the comments below. The capsule art is a subset of what's required for a game. Adding this can be really annoying because they put a diagonal banner at the top left corner and will reject your artwork if it covers up the game name or other key information. I typically put soundtrack text on the original game capsule art, but as you can see with the banner overlap in the corner of the N of Navigating the Labyrinth, I've run up against this text positioning problem before. In this version, the game name is shifted a fair amount compared to the original art in order to get accepted. This is also where you can upload PDF liner notes and song lyrics, though I haven't done that before. The community icon is the same as ever, nothing new there. Part of the process is setting pricing. Their suggested currency conversions are pretty good, though I prefer to adjust them a bit higher for high inflation countries. And since they're not pegged to currency exchange, if you have the patience, you should reprice your games and soundtracks every few months or every year just to normalize them. Back when the Argentine peso was a valid Steam currency, games that hadn't repriced in five or more years were ridiculously cheap, since Argentina had inflation of 50% or even 75% a year on average. You'd find $20 games selling for 15 cents because they hadn't repriced during this time. People would scam game developers by changing their accounts to Argentina and using a VPN to buy things. As a developer, if Steam isn't going to auto-adjust for currency exchange, I'd at least like them to send me a quarterly or even yearly price adjustment suggestion. What would be ideal, and what they're doing for certain groups of countries like the former Soviet countries, Southeast Asia, and Latin American countries that don't have their own currency listed, is let you enter a US dollar price and they handle the conversion. I imagine if you're in Canada, they have you enter all this in Canadian dollars. I can't think of a reason not to publish prices immediately. Depots have always been an odd thing about Steam. For a soundtrack, each package will have two depots, one for the main MP3 content and one for the high resolution audio, or just one depot if you only have MP3 content. One depot will be tagged as normal audio and the other will be tagged as optional high quality uncompressed audio. Ignore the warning about depots not being referenced for now. Referencing them is part two. So now we go to edit packages. This is where we add depots in the depots included section. We have to do this three times, for the main package, for the developer comp, which is automatically generated, and for the beta testing package, which is also automatically generated. Just click Add Depots and select them both. In case you need to get to the depots, they're under the Associated Packages and DLC section of the Soundtracks App Admin. As for packaging the files to upload, you're going to create two zip files. The first contains the MP3s plus the album art. The second contains the high quality audio files in a subdirectory. You can compress them with any app like WinZip or WinRAR. I use iZark, but all zip compression apps are basically the same. Don't forget to set proper MP3 tags. It's a small thing, but empty artist, album, and song title annoys some people, like me. If your files don't have proper MP3 tags, find a tag editor app. There are tons of them. I'm using an app called MP3 Tag, but most any app should work. The high quality audio should be in a subdirectory. Here I use WAVE and compress the files from a directory level above so they extract into a WAVE subfolder. Once you've created your two zip files, you can upload them without using SteamPipe, assuming they are 2 gigabytes or less, so that part of the process is much simpler. Under Builds, in App Data Admin, you'll see a link to go to the Upload area. Note the warning, you currently have unpublished depot configuration changes. You need to publish those first, so click the Publish tab and do that if you haven't already. The actual uploads are simple. Select each file with Type Standard and click Upload. After uploading these files, you'll need to set the uploaded build as live. Under SteamPipe Builds, you'll see a list of builds with one entry, which is what you just uploaded. You need to set that live for the default branch. This works just the same as it does for game builds. With all of this done, you're ready to submit for review. 
Now after clicking Mark as ready for review, you'll get a cryptic box. It looks like a string tag for localization that they haven't gotten to yet. It's the same as the please provide additional comments here box you get on submitting a game build. Just leave it blank and hit OK. This should of course be done a few weeks before release date because it's common to have issues you need to fix. In this case, I had a song length in a file not match what was in the metadata and had to fix it. Here's their email about that. Once it's approved, you publish it just like you would any other game on the release date. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or if anything was unclear, leave a comment and I'll do my best to reply. Thanks for watching.